I'm washed in the blood of Jesus Washed in the blood of hope Way too loud now. Oh, the name of Jesus. Cut them, cut them both in half. Just cut them both in half. Oh, the name of Jesus. The name of Bonville. Every name, the 
Lord, your praise will continually be oh, in my mind. Oh, and bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Bless your holy name. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Bless His holy name. Step our hands and we praise your holy name. There's nothing like our God. There's no one like him in person. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and everything that's in me. Bless his holy Lift up my hands and praise you. I lift up my voice and praise you. I praise you. I praise you, Lord. Oh, I lift up my hands and praise you. I lift up my voice and praise you. I praise you. I praise you, Lord. Oh, I lift up my hands and praise you. I lift up my voice and praise you. I praise you. I praise you, Lord. Oh, I lift up my hands and praise you. I lift up my voice and praise you. I praise you. I praise you, Lord. There's no power greater than your name. There's no power greater than your blood, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. There's no power greater than your name. There's no power greater than your blood, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. I lift up. Oh, I lift up my hands and praise you. I lift up my voice and praise you. I praise you. I praise you, Lord. Oh, I lift up my hands and praise you. I lift up my voice and praise you. Oh, I praise you. I praise you, Lord. There's no power greater. There's no power greater than your name. There's no power greater than your blood, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Are my God, oh, and you are my God forever. You are the mighty Savior, and all, all belongs to you. 
you are my king forever and you are my king forever you are my great creator you are my great creator and all about and all, me all about you you're my god and you, you are my god forever you are my mighty savior you are the mighty savior you are and all Oh, belongs to you. You are my king forever. You are my king forever. You are my great creator. You are my great creator. And oh, oh, bow to you. There's no power greater than your name. There's no power greater than your blood, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. No 
blood, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, so I lift up my hands and praise you. I lift up my voice and praise you. I praise you. I praise you, Lord. Oh, I lift up my hands and praise you. I lift up my voice and praise you. I praise you. I praise you, Lord. Oh, I lift up my hands and praise you. I lift up my voice and praise you. I praise you. I praise you, Lord. You are my God. For you are my God forever. You are the mighty Savior. And all, all belongs to you. You are my King forever. And you are my King forever. You are my great creator. You are my great creator. And all, all will bow to you. When you are my God forever, you are the mighty Savior, and all, all belongs to you. And you are my King forever, you are my great Creator, and all, all about you. Precious Jesus, oh glorious and wonderful, oh Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh glorious and wonderful, wonderful is your name. Oh, wonderful Counselor, mighty God, mighty God, Prince of Peace, Prince of Peace, Jesus, Jesus, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. 
Oh, have your way in me. I yield myself to thee. Oh, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of God. Oh, have your way in me. I yield myself to thee. Oh, your signs and wonders, Lord. All heavens come to earth. Oh, the glory and the majesty of God. Oh, your signs and wonders, Lord. All heavens come to earth. Oh, the glory and the majesty of God. Oh, your signs and wonders, Lord. All heavens come to earth. Oh, the glory and the majesty of God. Holy Ghost and Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of God. Oh, have your way in me. I yield myself to thee. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of God. Oh, have your way in me. I yield myself to Thee, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of God. Oh, have Your way in me. I yield myself to Thee. Oh, Your signs and wonders now, all heavens come to earth. Oh, the glory and the majesty of God. Oh, your, your signs and wonders now, all heavens come to earth, oh, the glory and the majesty of God. Satisfy, I was a captive prisoner. I am a prisoner of heaven's love, of Jesus' love, of the ways of God, the Lord most high. Just one glance of Jesus, and my whole life was changed. A revolution began within. Satisfy, I was a nip, a prisoner, a captive of heaven's love. Give me Jesus. One glance of Jesus and my whole life was changed. A revolution began within my heart. And nothing in this world could satisfy me anymore. I am a captive prisoner of heaven's love. Give me Jesus. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Jesus Christ the Lord. God is He. Give me Jesus. 
Jesus. I'll take Jesus. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Father, thank you for Jesus. <laughs> Father, thank you for this wonderful work of grace. Give me Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I'll take Jesus. Give me Jesus. Jesus. I'll take Jesus. And his amazing grace. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. I'll take Jesus. And his love for me. One glance of Jesus. And my whole life has changed. A revolution began within my heart. And nothing in this world could satisfy me anymore. I am a captive prisoner of his love of the Lord. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. We'll take this whole world. I'll take Jesus and his grace and his love for me. <laughs> Woohoo! I'll take Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Offering. A whole pleasing offering. A whole burnt offering. Father, we thank you for this place that we can stand right here in the midst of the central part of coastal San Diego County. Lift up our voice to you. Let it be an altar, Father. Let there be a pleasing and a holy sacrifice that you can send your fire and consume it, Lord, in your love. And the world be touched by it. In this region. In Jesus' name. And I will be a whole bird of free. I will be a living sacrifice. I will be a sweet aroma. But unto you, oh my everything for you, Lord. My everything for you, for Jesus, Jesus, you're my righteousness, Jesus, you're my holiness, Jesus, you're my name above every name. Jesus, you're my righteousness. Jesus, you're my holiness. Jesus, you're the name above every name. I'll be a whole burnt offering. So I'll be a whole burnt offering. I'll be a living sacrifice. I will be a sweet aroma but unto you Oh my everything for you Oh my everything for you Oh for you Jesus My everything for you Oh, my everything for you, Lord. And I will be a whole burnt offering. I will be a 
living sacrifice. I will be a sweet aroma, but unto you, Lord Jesus, unto you, all my everything for you, all for you, Jesus, all my everything for you, Lord my everything for you go oh, and take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory Lord. take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory Jesus all for you Lord and I will be a whole burnt offering. I'll be a living sacrifice. I will be a sweet aroma. But unto you, Lord, will my everything for you. Oh, my everything for you, all for you, Jesus, my everything for you, and I will be a whole burn offering, I will be a living sacrifice, I will be a sweet aroma. Good unto you. Well, welcome everybody. We're glad that you in this place on Camino Real and San Diego Road. <laughs> uh, about um, uh, many years ago, 1982, right over here on this hill uh, off Del Mar Heights. The Lord just did an amazing thing. It's really a big part of the birth of this church and this ministry. And you continue guitar where I'm talking. A big part of this church and ministry. And of course, as time has gone on, we've been all over the county. And here we are, kind of right back where we started from. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's been, an, it's been an amazing thing of preparation in God. Because we've seen everything from... Just a small house, it wasn't really a small house, medium-sized house up in Del Mar, jam-packed, full of people, out the front door, out the back door, to going to the Naval Training Base and seeing that packed out with people for about five years. Just all the different things, all the different seasons in God, it's just amazing. Eh? And a lot of people have come and gone and and a lot of things have taken place that some good, some bad. But always, Father, is so perfectly the same. He never changes. Yes. Same promise. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And you know, one of the things that we've held in our heart is that God would begin to do by Christ Jesus, His only begotten Son, the signs and the wonders and the miracles that He ordained, that He did, that have never ceased. Never ceased. Throughout history, we'll see one or two people stand up in every generation with the power of God manifested, same, same ministry of Jesus. It's Jesus' ministry. It isn't men's ministry. Religion goes on, charts its little path, basically like a drunk man weaving all over the road. But God raises up people to do those things that only Christ Jesus can do. Amen. And I just think this, uh, this ministry, you know, this place and this people and everything I minister on it's all about seeing people step over into this wonderful life that God has supplied to us in His only begotten Son, Jesus. Not a religion. A relationship that brings the manifestation of His person. Not just His miracles. His holiness. What is holiness? The beauty of His love. The essence of God is holiness. It's who He is. You know what? If God interacts with anything that's not holy, He's not holy no more. I'll just say it again. If God interacts with anything that's not holy... He's not holy anymore. And the only possible way to take sinful men and bring them to a place where God could interact with them was God had to do a tremendous, amazing thing where He, God Himself, supplied His own life, His blood's life, His life's blood, 
so that you and I could be made a new creation. Greatest thing that God ever did. Oh, the variety of God's creation, nobody can catch up with it. I mean, I've got a pretty powerful telescope, but I can just look so far. Listen, it's just immense. The vast variation in it. And, and all that God has done is just overwhelming. But God did something so beyond all of that when he made a new creation in Christ Jesus. Somebody said, oh, well, the Lord just restored us back to what Adam had. No, he took us all the way into what he possesses. And he made us one with himself. Something that the church doesn't seem to want to catch up with. But you know what? It's a matter of understanding. God's done something for us that is unspeakable. And people got the various different thresholds that they set as to how much God can do for them. Well, he can just do this much. He can just save me this much. He can just be this good to me. He can just make me just so right. No. No, he made us anew in Christ Jesus. Outside, you Listen, every person alive is so unrighteous. There's none righteous. They're so unholy in contrast and comparison to who God is in his love and his goodness. There's no hope, man. You know, we're a lot with the Hindus in Asia. And they try so hard, but they're never going to get there. We're a lot with Muslims and different places in what we call the 1040 window, whether it's in Asia or the Middle East. They try as hard as they want. They're never going to get there. One day I had a, a very devout Muslim talking to me and he was saying, you know, it really comes down to this. You know, we're going to all be judged one day. And, and if we do more good works than we do bad works, then ultimately God's going to look at us and say, okay, you're, you're good. You can come in. I looked at him and I said something he'd never heard before. I said, I've already been judged. I've already been judged and I've been counted acceptable and holy to God. He's staring at me. He's like his catechism to prepare him for this. You know what he learned over at the mosque didn't help verse him for this. He said, how can you say that? I said, Jesus Christ, the eternal God, the son of God. Greatest expression of blasphemy in Islam. The son of God. Hallelujah was my judgment at Calvary's cross. Come on, are you listening to me? And when he died, God worked out a miracle that anybody who would call upon his name could experience that death together with him so that our sins would be paid for in full and that it would not stop there because a death, that's an end. Everybody looked at this and said, oh man, this is an end. This what a terrible, you know, what a terrible end. I mean, he did all these signs and wonders and all these amazing things that only God can do. And look at it. It's disaster. He's a curse hanging on a tree. What? This is shameful and pathetic. They had no idea what was going on in the unseen world, realm. As he spoiled principalities and powers. As he defeated every authority of darkness. Every tyrannical reign of the, of the satanic realm. Come on, think about it. And then he... Not only did he die at Calvary's cross, but he went down in hell for us. So we never have to darken the door. I never want to see the gates of hell. I don't want to, don't want to glance at them. I care not to know anything about them. He went down into hell on, for us. Think about it. Think about this amazing love of God. It is an amazing love. I mean, come on. No man has ever imagined such a story that God would make himself, would humble himself to become nobody. He humbled himself to become nothing. That's how the Apostle Paul preached. He said, Christ humbled himself. He took upon himself this wonderful, amazing event. He took upon himself the likeness of sinful flesh and made himself void. Nothing. He emptied himself. He made himself nothing. And then having done that, and now I'm in a position to get ridiculed and persecuted worse than anybody's been ridiculed in elementary school or junior high school or wherever you've been ridiculed. To then become this foot washing servant for men. To then become the one who would die in our place and take all of our shame and all of our sin. Go down into hell for us. So that you and I could say this. I am crucified with Christ. Say, I'm crucified with Christ. I'm crucified. I'm buried with him by baptism into his death. I'm raised up together with him. 
That is an amazing thing to be raised. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Come on. Not these things. Set not your affections on things of the earth. For you're dead. And your life is hid with God in Christ Jesus. And Christ, who is our life, when he appears, we shall also appear with him. Ah! I mean, right now, it's like, you know... It's like, well, we're flowing in the wonderful river of God. We're running contrary to everything that's going on in the world. I mean, we're walking right up center of everything that's going on in the world. I, I remember the first time I was in Shanghai and I walked out onto the street. You got to be careful when you walk out on the street in Shanghai, China or Hangzhou because it is a force. There, it is wall-to-wall -wall people. The sidewalk's probably about 12 to 14 foot wide, and it is jam-packed, and everybody, I'm telling you right now, they're so close. It's just a mass of people. You try to walk up contrary to that flow of people. You're going to get trampled. God has done something so supernatural for us where that we can actually walk in every way contrary to this world and watch people turn around huh? and be unaffected by all the things that Satan could launch against us. Listen, this is an amazing salvation that I don't think we've really begun to scratch the surface of. But reality of it is that God's going to allow everyone who's hungry and thirsty for him to begin to fully comprehend that which Christ Jesus did for us. When he bore our sins away on his, in his own body on the tree. Now you're going to find, if, you, if you're just visiting, you're going to find that I just, I just quote scripture. I discover the safest place to be in the doctrine of God is just to quote the scripture. I just weave the scripture together. Just let people know what God says because there's a lot of ideas floating around, concepts floating around about who God is, about who Jesus is. But I'm interested in knowing Jesus, the same Jesus. Paul said in Hebrews 13, 8, he said, Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's unchanging. All he did was make a transition. He showed us this beautiful, this glorious realm of heaven by the power of the Holy Ghost. I want you to understand this. Everything that Jesus did in his ministry, he did by the Holy Ghost. This is absolutely, the unequivocally, the Word of God spoken with such repetition that if I took you through all the verses of Scripture to validate what I'm saying for you right now, we would just be here for the rest of the evening just showing you that. But everything he did, he by the, did by the Holy Ghost. He said, if I cast out devils, for example, in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 28, if I cast out devils by the Holy Spirit, then the kingdom of God has come to you. What's a great revelation in Scripture? We understand that the action and activity of what God the Holy Ghost is doing is heaven. It's the kingdom of God. I'm living in heaven right now. Paul said that we've actually been translated out of the kingdom of this world into the kingdom of the dear Son, Colossians 1.13. Reality of it is, if we don't agree with God, we're never going to understand the power and the authority to live this amazing life. And I'm gonna, so I'm going to tell you about some things that I've been believing for for a long time. This is a vision in my life, and we've seen the ups and downs of it. We've seen great highlights and moments of it. Then we've seen things where it kind of calmed down, and, you know, the Lord readjusts us, and we do different things in, in this, in America, as well as in other nations. But I've never lost the vision in a heartbeat to see the stadium, what once was Qualcomm Stadium. I don't even know what they're calling it now. No, I'm sorry. It was Jack Murphy Stadium. Now, then Qualcomm, now whatever it is. And to see it filled, not because there has been advertisement, not because it was some special person, not because there was some, you know, amazing band or worship people team but because of the signs and the wonders of Jesus. Jesus said, anyone who believes these works which I do, shall he do also in greater works than these because I'm going to my Father. Yeah. Understand this, people. Listen to me. That means him saying, I'm going to my Father, means he's going to receive the promise of the Father and he's going to pour it out upon us. Religion can't do this. You know why? Because it's not in the realms of human ability. As Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he said, we're not sufficient of these things. We're not capable of these things. God is our sufficiency. He's our capability. Yeah. And I'm just believing God that, and I thought, you know, for a long time, the fairgrounds is the place I want to be. I want to pack out all of those parking lots outside. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking, well, you know, with everything that's going on, you know, the fair and all the other special events, how are you ever going to have a chance? And now things are different. They're not hardly doing anything over there. 
bit bigger than that. I just, you know, I'm, we love people. God loves people. I don't want to see Rady's Hosp Children's Hospital have any sick kids in it. I want to see every one of them touched by the power of Jesus, no matter who they are. Muslim, Hindu. Doesn't matter who they are. Agnostic, atheist. The Lord just freely gives and leaves, leaves people to decide what they want to do with his love, with his goodness, and with his mercy. You know, I want to see the dead raised to life again because that's Jesus' ministry. I want to see people that are vexed and tormented and afflicted. You know how many people right now statistically in San Diego County are contemplating suicide while we sit around and do whatever it is we're doing? No, 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 no. Look, that's why the Lord gave us the discerning of spirits and the word of knowledge. So we know how to find those people out, flesh those people out, and bring them something that will change every bit of their life. They recently just shut down the 8 because it was a crazy bridge. I looked over this bridge where somebody was... I don't know if they jumped off or they were going to jump off, but they had the whole Interstate 8 shut down. I'm looking over this bridge, and I mean, it's terrifying. It's a huge canyon up there in the Lagunas. I'm thinking, you can just imagine what that's like, that that actually, that that jump looks better than facing another second in your life. That, I'm so glad that there's nobody in here feeling that, feeling that. But there's way too many, tens of thousands right now in San Diego. And no one's really showed them Jesus. I don't want to show them another Jesus. I want to show them the Jesus. I don't want to show them a concept of religious Jesus. Because if, if you look at churches across, this, across the board, you've got all these different beliefs and all different ideas, same Bible, but all these different beliefs and all these same different ideas. And it simply be, it comes down to what happens is men become disciples of men. And instead of listening to what God said, because there's a revelation that God gave of himself, and it's his word, it's his Bible. People say, well, I'm, you know, I go to this church, or I go to that church, and I'm submitted to this church, or I'm submitted to that denomination, or whatever. Well, that's fine, but are you submitted, are they submitted to what the Apostle Paul said? Because that's true submission to church. Are they submitted, are you submitted to what the Apostle Peter said? And I'm amazed at how many people don't realize the richness of what they said. It's always been, they've been given the most amazing and wonderful report, the most amazing and wonderful information filtered through man's, you know, perception. That's not good. Not when God has made available to us the Bible on so many different, in so many different ways, your computer, your iPhone, my, come on, your smartphone or whatever. Are you with me? Your iPad, you know, hard copies. I mean, come on. I just, I truly believe if people would stop redacting, stop editing, stop imposing their concepts or their denominational ideas upon the Bible, everybody would agree with what, you know, is said because it's so simple to understand. It's not complicated language over here. And praise God, he's given to us an answer for every question, a sophisticated answer for every question. Are you listening to me? He's given us a sophisticated answer for every question that we would have. God's amazing. Now, if you have a wrong foundation and you start off wrong, then you're going to have a problem getting a, the answer because you're going to superimpose things on God and on His Word. And so, look, we're, we're so blessed to be here. Amen. I'm so blessed to be on this corner. Uh, we, we just recently, we, we, you know, we're celebrating 35 years of ministry out at our mission our world mission base in San Diego here. And, uh, you know, just saying, okay, the Lord's going to, Lord's going to provide some kind of a, of a, a lot, a parking lot, something, shopping center, parking lot, something. And it's going to happen quickly. And I commission everybody go out there and tell people that Jesus has need of their donkey kind of thing. <laughs> Jesus has need of your assets. Are you with me? I tell you, anytime you lend anything to the Lord, you're going to get blessed beyond anything that you can possibly even imagine. It's just the way it is. And then within, a, I don't know, before, before the meetings, special meetings were over that we had last week, here's this lot. And all of you guys came out here and started going to work, got rid of the jungle. 
<laughs> Cleaned it up. Uh, that's, that's what the Lord will do for you, your life, you know, in a moment. In an instant, you call upon the name of the Lord, you just basically run all, you just clean all the junk off real quick. Huh? Of course, he does a lot better because immediately all the beautiful green grass and flowers and beautiful trees, and, as it were, all like a fruitful garden of Eden, a paradise, kind of springs up on the inside of our life. And we're basically no longer walking in a wilderness of darkness and shame, but living in a paradise, walking out with, hallelujah, walking this out with the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Woohoo! <laughs> You know, I, I had someone ask me today, he said, should we put out signs and, and just let them know if you need a miracle, come? I said, no, Jesus doesn't advertise. They'll come. People come. They'll get the miracles. They'll know. Because the Lord's no respect of nations. Huh? He's no respecter of nation. He's not going to do in Kashmir, in Nepal, things that he's not going to do in San Diego. He's not going to do things in these other nations of the world that he's opened the doors for us to go into. And I tell you right now, Azerbaijan's calling me, especially since they heightened the silly war that's been going on between Azerbaijan and Armenia for such a long time, you know. It's a silly war over a strip of land that who wants to live there? Just a few people live there, if you know anything about it. But it's just the pride of men. It's just the way they are. They're killing each other over a piece of land that nobody wants to live on. But because of some, you know, inheritance that they can trace back in the history books a thousand years, it's theirs. Are you with me? Azerbaijan's calling me. Azerbaijan is about to have a great outpouring of God's Holy Ghost. Georgia, which is the first Christian nation. I don't know if you know your geography, but there's Armenia, there's Azerbaijan, and just above it is, Georg is Georgia. Okay, we're not talking about Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> just north of Alabama. <laughs> and and th it's just, th these places are just so ripe for the, for the gospel right now. And, you know, it's kind of like this thing, you know. I, obviously, I would have been running really hard overseas right now had it not been for COVID. And, uh, of course, I haven't gotten off of an airplane since the airplanes, since, you know, flights started opening up. I've been breathing all that air. <laughs> you know, we've not slowed down. All of COVID, we've not slowed down. We, we missed one meeting, and that wasn't a complete shutdown. And there was only one reason for that, because we had already filed a lawsuit against uh, Governor Newsom in the state of California and we just needed to behave ourselves so we didn't mess up the lawsuit but, at, but other than that we've had been able to run wide open praise God the sheriff looked at us and said listen as far as I'm concerned you're good and I'm not answering any phone calls or complaints and so it was, you know it was good it was good to have a place to do that there's not been one case of COVID among us or anybody who's ever visited us and there won't be and we've known of people that got COVID and we prayed for them. They didn't have it miraculously anymore. Huh? False positive. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, it's just true. It's just true. We're not going to be burned. We're not even the smell of smoke's not going to be upon our garments. Who's just going to obey the Lord? Look. <laughs> It's really, it comes down to this, and I was talking to a, a, an older man out on, on a trail, Ann and I were out in, the, out in the woods, and he come walking by, and immediately, you know, he's trying to social distance, get his mask on, prepare himself to interact with us, and, and I just began to tell him, you know, talk to him about the Lord, he said, yes, you know, I, I've been born of the Spirit, I believe he belo belonged to the Greek Orthodox Church, and I said, that's all great, and I said, that's good. I said, the bottom line of it is, you don't have to fear any of these things. You don't have to fear sickness or disease. Christ Jesus is in you. He's the master uh, of everything, and he's the healer of all sicknesses and diseases. And he said, well, you know, how about this preacher, and how about that preacher that got sick? I said, listen, I honestly, I, that's subjective. I can't tell you anything about them. I don't know anything about them. There's so many variables convoluting their life. I can't tell you anything about that. I can tell you about what God says in his word. That's absolute. That's the truth. That's not convoluted with things that we don't know anything about. It's amazing, you know, you, all of a sudden you think somebody just really walking with God and, then, you know, something comes out terrible about their life that they've been allowing go on in their life. So I don't know anything about that, but I can tell you this. Jesus said, when two blind men came to him and said, oh, we would receive our sight, he says, do you believe I'm able to do this? It's just real simple, eh? Do you believe I'm just able to do this? And they said, yes, Lord. He said, be it unto you according to your faith. Your faith, our faith, faith that God has given to us is what we believe Jesus is able to do. That's the definition of faith. 
it is revealed. Look, everything that is in the Bible is absolutely essential. Because if you were to take everything that Jesus did, the Apostle John said, I don't suppose that all the worlds could t contain everything that should be written just about three and a half years of ministry. How about 6,000 years of God at work? Okay, now, how about an eternal past of God at work? So, everything you have in this Bible, which looks very, very finite, very, very finite, opens us up to the eternal. It's all essential. Every bit. Even the stuff you don't like. <laughs> Even the stuff that camps out on your doorsteps and says you're, you're, you're wrong. You know, God never tells us that we're wrong without the power to make us right without the mercy and the grace to make us right. God never asks us to do anything that he himself doesn't empower us to do. It is an amazing work of divine grace. All men are without excuse. We have to blindly and arrogantly say no to God. His works and his grace and his mercy and his evidence is all around us. And we have to somehow just with such a stout and stubborn heart say no to him to follow on into stuff that is absolutely not making anybody happy. Not for very long. <laughs> Not doing anything to help anybody at all. It's making it worse. But God in His mercy once again is going to show Southern California, the state of California, the Western United States, His amazing mercy and grace. He is. He is. And He's going to do it. God is going to do it the way He's always done it. When God sends a person, beginning with Moses. When God, Moses is the first person to that God really sent to the nations. You understand that? I mean, from the framework of what we understand within the, you know, this, this time period right now, Moses is really the example of that. God sent him with great signs and wonders and miracles. And I could go on with Elijah and others who are prophets to nations, the signs and wonders and miracles. But there was no one who did the things that Jesus did who showed the love, the humility, the lowliness, the meekness, and the greatest power. Can you imagine what it looks like in the hands of man for man to have such amazing power? I promise you, meekness and lowliness is not accompanying that power. It's not. Not anywhere in, 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 in the world. It's only found in God that you could actually wield such power and such authority that's all about doing good and healing all those who are oppressed to the devil. We understand now that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that are oppressed of the devil. I remember at times saying that to a bunch of people in southern Nepal, I, in uh, different places, especially Nepal, the nation of Nepal, because we've been all over that nation. And the, uh, the, their eyes got really, really big, the thought and the concept that Christ Jesus is here and that he will heal all that are oppressed of the devil. My goodness, you know, the response is unlike anything that you would see in the Western world. And then all, when there's that a little bit of faith there, you know, I've, I've seen over and over again how that doubt and unbelief is the greatest obstacles of faith. The obstacles of faith. Okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you a bunch of examples. One of the examples would be this. And that is when there is a man who had a son that was possessed of a demon spirit that sore, sorely mistreated him and and tormented him and threw him into the water to drown him and threw him, if it was a fire going he would throw the demon would throw him into the fire to destroy him and the disciples who had left everything to follow Jesus left everything to follow Jesus which you can prove over and again that they had faith not only did they leave everything to follow Jesus and camped out with them could, when they could have been sleeping at home in bed with their wives huh are you listening to me they're out with Jesus around a campfire they left everything it's hard to break away from generational things, you know. They've been, Simon, Peter, and Andrew have been fishermen on the Sea of Galilee for generations, their family. Now they're following around this prophet who is God made flesh. And there's this situation they come up to, and Jesus had sent them out to cast out devils, raise the dead. Open up the eyes of the blind, and they had been having success. They've been doing exactly what they were commanded to do. Miracles were taking place. But now they're in a situation where it's just scary. It's frightful. You know, it's like the exorcist. It's just scary. <laughs> and they said to the they said to the Lord Jesus, after Jesus basically said, Go. 
and the devil left. They said to Jesus, well, why couldn't we cast out the devil? He said, because of your unbelief. Unbelief doesn't mean that you don't have faith. It is a thing, a power, a source of the realms of, of darkness, a thing that works out of the realms of fear that can impose itself upon you and block you from the realms of faith. I mean, look, unbelief is such a powerful blockage that let's let, the pers let's let faith personify. Let's let faith personified. Jesus Christ. He is the faith. He is faith personified. Everything you want to find about faith, you want to understand faith, is Jesus. You look at Jesus. He is the faith, and he supplies the faith. And everybody who he said, you're, according to your faith, or your faith has made you whole, it was all about their response to him. That's where they got it. You're with me? Yeah. Understand this. And here, Jesus goes into a place that you could almost personify as the town of unbelief. Okay, here the personification of faith walks into the town of unbelief and there he could do no mighty works. Unbelief is a powerful block against faith in the moving of God. But what Father's doing right now is he's doing even greater works and preparing people to move into greater works and we want you to understand how to identify unbelief in your life, how to identify fear in your life so you can shut those things down that would run a, blo a blockade. If anybody complains about the sound, I'm going to say, those cars, <laughs> especially the motorcycles. No, we, we serve everybody. We watch God, we're going to watch God touch people's hearts because what we're doing is supernatural. We're not here. I'm not here talking about myself, doing my own thing. This is a God thing. We're doing a God thing. We, we engage in the most important events in life the most important events that are taking place on planet Earth, Amen. showing forth His glory, Amen. functioning in something that's called a new creation. Yes. Now, there's so many things to talk about Jesus, and I just I want to highlight some things to you. Um, and, I, you know, this morning I, I talked a bit about this, and it's, it's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. It's very sobering. It's very sobering. And if you look in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3, Paul says, but I fear as the serpent deceived Eve in his trickery, even so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. He says, for if he that comes preaches another Jesus, whom we did not preach, whom we did not proclaim, or you receive a different Holy Spirit, which you did not receive, or a different gospel. And that was a threat that was going on. It was happening. People already, they had everything that looked good on the outside. It looked good. But they were talking about a different Jesus. So we, we got to say, is Jesus the same yesterday, today, forever? Are we really those people who are showing forth the life of Jesus? Let me tell you something about the, our confession, what we should be, and what our confession looks like. And of course, I just led you in one of the primary confessions of the Scripture. I'm crucified with Christ. I'm buried, with, by, I'm buried by baptism into His death. I'm raised up together with Him. I didn't get to the say I'm alive together with him. Alive. You listen, you you, you got to die before there's ever going to be a resurrection. You understand me, huh? And now that there's been a resurrection, we're alive with him. We're alive together with him, and we're seated with him in in, in the heavenly realm. Say I'm seated together with him in the heavenly realm. I'm seated together with him in the heavenly realm. It is amazing to me. Let me just stop here. It is amazing to me to find out how many people who called upon the name of Jesus, believe in the name of Jesus, but they don't know what God said about them. They don't understand that they're seated right now in the heavenly realm. And then a theologian will come along and say, oh, well, that's just positional. No, it's not. Is Christ in you? Prove that Christ Jesus is in you. This is what Paul said. Prove that Christ Jesus is in you. Otherwise, you just a reprobate. <laughs> I mean, that's one of two choices. Are you with me? I'm quoting scripture to you, people. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Christ Jesus is here. He's living on the inside of us. Because this amazing miracle of salvation took place for the purpose of you and I being able to demonstrate his life. Listen to me. In nature, in nature, to demonstrate his life in his, his very existence as well as his ministry in power and authority. 
But if you don't know what he said about you, how are you ever going to agree with him? His word will literally transform the way you think. But if you don't know what he said, if it's all been filtered and, all, and you didn't even know it, but somebody was presenting another Jesus. What is another Jesus? A Jesus that is different than the one that we read about in the Gospels that Paul described and imitated and showed forth in his life. Paul said in Romans 15, 19, he said, I fully preach the gospel. Do you know what it means to fully preach the gospel? He defines it. I fully preach the gospel with signs and wonders and demonstration of the power of God. He's got always in Corinthians, he's running a contrast with those who are really good orators versus him who's not a good polished speaker. Those who just basically are giving intellectual explanations about who God is versus who he was demonstrating the power of the life of God. Amen. Listen to me. Who is Jesus Christ? The same yesterday, today, and forever. He has all power and all authority. What is his interest? People. What did he do in his interest of people? He healed the sick and healed the diseased and set the tormented and the afflicted free. Where's that ministry? Because he's the same yesterday, today, forever. He's still doing exactly what he's always been doing. He's just doing it on a bigger scale. Supposed to be doing it on a bigger scale. Are you with me? But he's got you and I to depend on. This is what he's got to work with. But he's saying to us, anyone who believes, believes what? What he said. What if you don't know what he said? I mean, you take the communion table. Everybody's got the communion table out, right? Jesus, but yet, who will really tell you what John 6, 56 actually says? And it's the same in everybody's Bible. I don't care if I go to a Coptic church, same. If I go to a, you know, Greek Orthodox church, same. If I go to a Catholic Orthodox, same. If I go to a Pentecostal church, same. Methodist, same. Same scripture. It, 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 it doesn't change. Everything is exactly the same there. Anyone who believes. These works which I do, shall you do also in greater works than these. All the things that Jesus said and all the things that Jesus did that are essential for you and I to cooperate with this ministry is right there here for us to read. And that which is literally the foundation of the church that is built upon the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. I want to invite you people into a realm that God has given to us as a gift. Right there at the table, communion table. If I go in, as I was saying, and I don't... And I look and it doesn't care what denomination it is, what church belief it is. I look in their Bible. John 6, 56 reads the same. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me and I dwell in him. Did you hear that? Yes. How many people confess that God dwells in them and that they dwell in God? Wait a minute. Jesus said, I'm going to come. I'm going to come to you. Father, the, the same glory the Father gave to me, I've given it to you. What was Jesus' glory? And how did he show forth his glory? Turned his water into wine. Showed heaven come to earth. Took the invisible, made it visible. Are you with me? Say, take the invisible. Take the invisible. Make, it make it visible. That's the Greek word is hypostasis. And so if I say, what is faith? People say, well, faith is a substance of things hoped for. That's not exactly what the scripture says. Faith is the hypostasis. It's a scientific word that ultimately became a philosophical word that then became an ethical word. Scientifically, it's to make the visible invisible. It's the first precipitate in a chemical reaction. In something liquid, it's the first solid matter that you see. It's the visible, invisible made visible. It's the hypostasis. Faith is the hypostasis. It's the substance or the things making things that are invisible visible that we are confident in. The Elsis. This is true. This is true. The Lord says to us, I'm going to go back to this real quickly. The Lord, the Lord says to us, He says, the glory that the Father gave to me, I've given it to them. And, and here, that they may be one as we are one. Father, I in them, you in me. Come on, listen to me. Right now, if you're sitting in here, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done with your life, no matter how you think about yourself, if you've believed upon the name of the Lord Jesus and been born of the Spirit, God reports to you that He, Christ Jesus, and the Father, and the Holy Ghost, dwells on the inside of you. 
Look, that's, we want to make that positional and imaginary. We look in the mirror and all of our problems and all of our issues, and we think, how can that be? Well, it can be because God said so. Look at the sun. How can that be? It is because God said so. Look at the universe. How can that be? How many, how many galaxies are made up? How many galaxies are in the universe? How many galaxies make up the universe? Who knows? Somebody said, a hundred, somebody said several hundred thousand. No, I believe it's more than that. That's too limited. Are you listening to me? How many solar systems in a single galaxy? He said that, in, he said that that was to be so, that that's the way it is, and it exists. What? Look at the immensity of that. Look at the immensity of that. That was like one sentence. Light be and light was. He's written whole books over you and me. He's declared all these things over our lives. But at what point are we no longer distracted by the world, blocked out by unbelief? I mean, because there's so much propaganda and so much disinformation going on, right, left, and center, from school to the media, to, from the pulpit to the workplace. How are you ever supposed to, get, supposed to get anywhere with all of that? Well, God has given to us His truth, His word of truth, and the spirit of truth. And we need to grab a hold of it. And we need to say, hey, listen, God's in charge over here. Almighty God dwells in me. Here, think about what, listen, this is Jesus' ministry. Let's talk about who Jesus is in the, as He's revealed on the pages of the, of the Bible. Who He is right now, because... He was just simply promoted back to the glory that he always had with the Father. He's never ceased to be the miracle worker. Jesus said, he said to go and preach and that he would go everywhere with us, working with us, performing miracles. That's what Jesus said. Are you with me? Yes. That's what he said. I'll go everywhere with you. Just speak my word. I'll be there. I'll accompany you unto the end of the world with signs and wonders. The church, by definition, is supposed to be the literal manifestation of the person of Jesus Christ in the earth. The church. What are we? No, there's something that there's some adjustments that need to be made. And I want you to look at a verse of scripture with me. It kind of helps explain some of this in Colossians chapter 2. And of course, you know, I'm just really sticking with this thing about. A different Jesus. If someone has come and preached to you a different Jesus, this is what they were up against. Oh, they're using the name Jesus, and they're talking about Jesus who came, lived, died at Calvary's cross, rose again, but they're changing our response to him, what he is doing now, what he can do right now, what our lives are supposed to look like. And Paul was radical about us being conformed to the very life of Jesus, the very image of Jesus. And it's not like a bunch of do's and don'ts. It's not about a bunch of religious legalism. It's about life that has been poured into us by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Spirit, a life, an extraordinary life that we, we get an opportunity to live. But after all, you know, there's a lot of other things you can do with your life here in the good old United States of America. And if you want to, are you listening to me? There's a lot of opportunities. <laughs> well... You know, look at that. You just need to look at it. Look at it real hard. And then look at what, hopefully, look clearly at what Christ Jesus has given us an opportunity to do and be. And say, okay, where do I want to really invest my time? <laughs> because what God has fashioned for us is something that goes on for eternity. That's why we call it eternal life. He's working out something or wants to work out something in our lives. Because he's got a place and a position for us in himself in what he's purposed to do this spans all time and eternity. We get locked down in temporality and people, I want you to get liberated tonight like never before this afternoon. And just be, what I'm saying, to be liberated, to live out this wonderful, extraordinary life. It's the life of God. And I can't, you know, I like to be able to preach the whole Bible to everybody every, you know, in 45 minutes, but I can't do it. But I, there's a verse of scripture that you need to have tattooed in your heart. And it actually is written on tables of your heart, tattooed on your forehead. Don't do that. <laughs> it might already be hard enough to relate to you. Tattoo on your forehead is like, yeah, it won't work. But the Lord says, according to his divine power, he's given to us all things that pertain to life, his life, and godliness, his godliness, because he's called us to his glory. And to his excellence of character. 
Now, seeing as you and I have been made partakers of the divine nature, divine nature, born of the Spirit. Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of a human being is a human being. Eh? Yeah. We all qualify. But he said, there's another kind of life. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. That which is born of the divine is divine. That which is born of the Holy Ghost is of the Holy Ghost. And Paul goes after this in Romans chapter 8 and makes it really very clear. This amazing life that God has given to us by His divine power that He's brought us into, that has empowered us to escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. And men have come along and said, no, 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 it's okay. We're all sinners. Just continue on. You know, God still loves you. No, God, listen to me, people. It's something better than that. Look, we don't have to eat out of the garbage can of sin and iniquity anymore. We get to sit up at the king's table. Are you listening to me? People think they can believe, bring, bring all this junk and all this demonic activity along with them and go see the Father and interact with the Father. It just doesn't work that way. God has given us the privilege of being divested of all these plagues and all of these diseases and all these spiritual leeches, for lack of a better word. All these beguiling snakes that come slithering into our lives, as it were, so that we can be free to know Him and walk with Him and live His life. He chose the best kind of life. The Lord didn't the Lord did not choose the life of a monastic. He, cho he chose an amazing life, a life full of love and joy and peace and goodness and, and the stuff that lasts forever where no relationships are ever broken. All we've known is broken relationships, messed up families, dysfunctionality on so many levels. God's got the cure for all of that. That's all demonic. Who wants to bring that stuff along? Who wants to solvate their brain cells and crystallize what's left with alcohol and drugs and, and create all kinds of, of havoc through relation, wrong relationships, that are, a relationship that's only supposed to exist in a covenant and a vow between a man and a woman who brings forth children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and you sit around blessed and everybody's happy and loves to be with each other with a smile on their face, hugs on their heart. That's life. Amen. And it keeps getting better. Amen. God loves us with that kind of love, people. We're his family. He loves us that kind of love. But the bottom line of it is, he's not compromising his ways. And I'm so glad. He's not going to compromise his way for you. Say, well, you know, you know, I really like them. They're really cute. They're really nice to be around. So you know what? You know, this one time we're going to allow a little bit of demonic activity. Because one compromise leads to another. And ultimately, as soon as God would do something like that, interact. I want you to hear me. Oneness with God, as soon as he's going to interact with unholy things, he wouldn't be holy anymore. God made a way through the blood of Jesus Christ that you and I would be made holy. He gave us the gift. We didn't deserve it. This is the gift of salvation. People talking to you about the gift of salvation. Would you please go on, brother, pastor, evangelist, minister. Would you let the people know the rest of the story? God gave us the gift of the of the spirit of holiness. He gave us the gift of salvation. He gave us the gift of holiness. He gave us the gift of righteousness so that we can grow and mature in it according to his divine power. And if, listen, there's nothing more important for you to understand than this. God's given you power and authority over every demon spirit, every, over every unclean spirit. And you know what those are? Those are the ones that come and tempt you with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. You know, people ask me all the time, would you please help me understand what it truly means to deny yourself? What does it mean to take up your cross and deny yourself? And uh, I try to help people just understand, let's look, at a big, let's look at the big picture to start with. Number one, don't allow the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Just stop that. Shut that down. And then we'll get into some more finer de details about denying yourself. And what's denying yourself about anyways? As long as you're activated, the Holy Ghost can't do much, and He's much smarter than you are. He's much more beautiful than you are. He's much more talented than you and I are. <laughs> huh? Are you listening to me? He brings to us everything that heaven has. Without him, we don't know Jesus. We can't know Jesus. We can't see Jesus. We can't walk with Jesus. We can't know anything about heaven. And as long as we're active and as long as we're doing all of this stuff, he can't do anything. So he says, would you just be quiet for a few minutes? That's denying yourself. Are you listening to me? Now that you practice being quiet for a few minutes, now could you be quiet for the rest of your life? And let me speak through you and let me act through you and let me live through you and let me show you how to live this divine eternal life. 
He brought to you and me temporal human humanity that which he's possessed throughout all eternity. I want you to say, I want you to hear me. He brought to you and I temporal humanity who just been living a short time all the wisdom of eternity and he wants to activate that through our lives and the greatest display of it is this amazing unending unchanging love of God you know I and I, I say this quite often I'll say it some more uh, because many people talk about somebody needs me to pray for them that sounds a baby in every language I don't care if it's a Japanese baby a Kashmirian baby a United States baby when they start squawking or crying they're saying pastor I need help right now please pray for me so I usually do respond I don't want to resp- I don't want to ignore anyone's cry for help I want to impress you upon you this extraordinary life there's not a life of legalism it's not a life of of trial and toil it's a life that is extraordinary it's a life that has been poured out upon us freely to where that you can live in divine health divine blessings Amen. where every day the Lord just matures you increases you more and more where you learn to walk in his holiness and say well this is actually a lot better huh yes. I chose him as the best choice I ever made Amen. <laughs> and every time I choose him it's the best choices that I made Amen. Every time I decide for him. I want you to look in your Bibles real quickly with me in Colossians chapter 2. I want, you, I want to show you something that we're up against. In this life of Jesus, this Jesus. Paul, Paul preached Jesus. He didn't preach another Jesus. He preached Jesus and demonstrated Jesus in his life. And he said that's what you and I are supposed to do. And he made room for us to grow and mature into that. To be conformed to that image. But there's got to be something going on in our heart that wants that. If we still have a longing for, the, for, for iniquity and sin, that needs to be broken. And the Lord will break that off of you. And this is how he does it, by the preaching of the word. Amen. He does. He works miracles. Yes. Get around somebody that is preaching to you this life in Christ Jesus. To where that you no longer are under the powers of darkness. That you can tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of Satan. And it really first and and foremost comes at you in temptation. That looks like it's irresistible. Why? Why is this so irresistible? By and large it's because, you know, men have only known and understood pleasures within the realm of sin. They've never been around God long enough to realize that his pleasures are way better than the pleasures of sin. That his joy, unspeakable and full of glory, is something that is literally an interaction with him, a place that you can go to, huh? And you don't need all the stuff that goes on within the realms of darkness that destroys you. God's given us the power to break off those addictions and off those, break off those strongholds. The first thing is you got to know is that Christ Jesus saved you. That, he, that you are born of the Spirit. To be a new creation, a new kind of creation in the earth. First thing that you've got to be willing to do is agree with what God said about you. Because if you don't agree with God, people, you can never do it. You're going to find a life of, it's sin that dwelleth in me. (laughs) Romans 7, 18 says, oh, it's sin that dwelleth in me. Romans 7, 20 says, oh, it's sin that dwelleth in me. Now contrast and compare that to the more than 30 times that it directly says God dwells in me the spirit of God dwells within me Christ Jesus dwells within me how are you going to square that are you listening to me they don't square one is one state it's declaring one state of man and the other is declaring a different state of men that different state of men God has given to us that have called upon the name of Jesus but if we don't agree with his word which is spirit and life which is living and powerful We'll never live it. If we don't know it, then we can never agree with it. And unfortunately, so many people are victims of what Paul describes in Colossians 2 8. Look there with me. And we want we want to make sure that you're not a victim. I have a friend of mine who pastored the largest church in Miami, Florida. And you talk about raging success from the ministry, he basically qualified. He said the Lord told him 
to leave his church, turn his church over to someone else so that he could go throughout his denomination and get all the people that are in that denomination, which is a Pentecostal denomination, saved. It's pretty radical, isn't it? God told him to leave the, one of the most successful churches in America to go to his denomination and preach in the churches of his denomination because he had the open door because after all, everybody wants somebody super successful to come to their church. And he's going to go there because he wants to get them saved. He got alone long enough with Christ Jesus to recognize, uh-oh, there's some hanky-panky going on around here. There's some messing around going on in here. People have had their pure minds corrupted by the same thing that overthrew Eve in the garden. They were robbed of the simplicity of Christ Jesus with another message. It's like the serpent comes into the garden and says to Eve, says, oh, you won't surely die. Sin won't destroy you. Disobedience won't destroy you. Listen, God's trying to keep something back from you. Let me give you this new idea and this new doctrine. And so the simplicity and the innocence that she had, Paul actually takes that in 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, 2 and 3, and begins to apply it to the church right now that people can come in and they can begin to corrupt your understanding of who Jesus is right now and the kind of life that he's purposed for us to live. And this is, this is going, look, it's going to get worse. According to the Apostle Paul, according to Christ Jesus, it's going to get worse as we come to the end. We're not at the end, people. This isn't the end. I know it looks bad. When you're staring in the face of evil, it's ugly. This isn't the end. We're still at a place where we've got Amy Barrett being appointed to Supreme Court. A, a Catholic lady who belongs to the people of praise, which is a Catholic charismatic group. Huh? And she's going to be mocked and she's going to be persecuted because she believes in the working operation of the Holy Ghost. Huh? But what? Well, that, is a, what, what that, is a, that is a token of God's mercy for this nation. Yeah. Now, people have all these things to say. I look at things that are quantitative. Can you measure it? Is it quantitative? And when I look at what's going on in the judicial system of 300 conservative judges, which I would say more people who will actually rule on the side of morality instead of immorality, that's what I call conservative. Who are, you know, are you listening to me? on individual freedoms and individual rights, but under that individual freedoms and individual rights is based upon a lot of morality. That's where that's found. That's why this wonderful thing that God did in the United States of America has allowed us the things that we've had been allowed up to this point. And we're not done yet because we've got to run to the nations and I can't have anybody putting me in jail. Not here in America. I get to escape all the jails of the foreign nations. Huh? I got to escape the jail of... In, uh, uh, out of uh, just south of Alexandria, Egypt, out of China, out of other places. And I'm not going to be put in jail in America. I ain't, not, I ain't got no time for that. <laughs> Are you listening to me? <laughs> I ain't got no time for that stuff. We got nations to reach. We got people to touch. We, we're going to see this thing explode in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to see the ministry and person of Christ Jesus the wonderful things that we look back in history and we say, oh, that was a great awakening. Well, what was, it a great, what was it about it that was a great awakening? The ministry of the Holy Spirit to convict men of sin and to reveal the person of Jesus Christ. Let me just tell you like this. Let me try to help you understand it like this. When you encounter God, when you encounter His presence, everything that you've ever done wrong flashes before your eyes. It's just true. You're overwhelmed. Isaiah, a great prophet of God who came with the woes and the intense revelation of Father's heart and will. Suddenly in Isaiah chapter 6, behold God and he says, I'm destroyed. I'm devastated or I'm undone because he's looking at the glory of God and he sees himself as unclean and in the midst of a people that are unclean with unclean lips and the Lord says, no problem, I'll take care of that. Seraphim, go get a call from off the altar. Touch his lips. Now, you're, now your sin and iniquity has been purged. Your uncleanness is taken from you. How much more will the blood of Jesus do that for us? And that's an awakening, people, where all of a sudden, by the power of the Holy Ghost, people realize, wait a minute, I'm undone. There's the Holy One. I want to get right. There's no way to get right but the blood of Jesus. 
that's an awakening. And at the very heart of that is a reverence of God and of His holiness and His beauty and a willingness to participate with His ways. And I think the greatest thing that's going on right now that's leading the world towards the end of apostasy, the apostasy is these doctrines that somehow allow you to continue on in sin, continue on carousing with demon spirits and saying that you're one with God. It ain't going to work that way. It will not work that way. It will not work that way. It will not work that way. There'll be no awakening that way. But when the people start walking with God and carrying around the persona, persona, the persona of the Holy Spirit, the beauty of His holiness, the glory of His life, I know what has empowered Satan to beat God's people up and run roughshod over God's people. I know what's empowered that. These doctrines of men. These traditions of men. For men who walk around confessing, I'm unholy instead of holy. Well, are you washed in the blood? Then you're holy. Are you washed in the blood? You're righteous. Without the blood, there's none righteous, no, not one. Without the authority of this change that takes place, all men are lost and hopelessly lost in their sin and iniquity. But Jesus died at Calvary so that you and I could be made right. His righteousness, having been made His righteousness, now cut off from sin. To live with Him and live for Him. Now the Spirit, speak is, now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the last days there shall be seducers that will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Who had turned the grace of God into lasciviousness. This is what Paul says. It's in a warning to Timothy. He tells us in a warning in Romans 1.18. He says, listen, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all who hold the truth of God in unrighteousness. People aren't being warned properly. I'm just going to quote the word of God. I'm just telling you what God says. Because what he says is right. What I say is wrong. What he says is right. What I say is is basically limited to my understanding at this point but what he says my goodness it never changed where did we go wrong what's going on what do we have to be guarded against and what we have to be careful against right now that is when people are changed the beauty and the purity of what Jesus did for us in making us a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are new and all things are of God when people take away, there is therefore now no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. I mean this beautiful, wonderful message of freedom and liberation. If the Son shall liberate you, then you shall be truly liberated. <laughs> huh? The Son shall set you free, then you are free, absolutely free. It's true. Free from what? With well, the context in John chapter 8 is free from sin, free from demonic powers tyrannically reigning over you. What happens is the primary focus of Satan is to corrupt the purity of what Christ Jesus has brought to us, the purity of the Holy Spirit, the purity of heaven, the ability to grow in all the realms of His ways. His ways are far more beautiful than anything you've ever seen on the planet. His ways of goodness, His ways of love, His ways of truth, His ways of righteousness, His ways of mercy, His ways. I want everybody in this place tonight to miraculously get an encounter with Jesus Christ by the Holy Ghost so that you can take a glimpse of Jesus. Because one glimpse of Jesus will change your life. A revolution will begin within your heart and nothing in this world will be able to satisfy you anymore. You become a captive prisoner. This is what the Lord says, the Spirit of the Lord says. You become a captive prisoner of His love forever. And oh, it's so good. It's so good. Here's why people believe different things. This is why there's different denominations, literally different divisions. You know what Paul said about different denominations, different divisions? He says, you're babes. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. One says, I'm a Paul. That's a good group to be with. Oh, I belong to Paul's church. Good group. 
good group. Well, I belong to Peter's church. Whew, that's another good group. And, uh, well, we belong to Apollos because he's smarter than everybody. Well, I don't really know much about him. He didn't get any verses of Scripture. He was referred to in Scripture. Are you with me? Yeah. I'd rather pick Peter or... I mean, I think the people on, on Apollos, they should have, like, they should have felt a little bit, you know... Are you with me? Slighted is when you say, oh, well, I belong to Paul's group. You should, like, feel, like, inferior if you belong to Apollos' group. <laughs> you wouldn't feel inferior if you belong to Peter's group, right? But Paul goes, are you guys out of your mind? Don't you understand that when you walk in these kinds of divisions, that all you're doing is acting like carnal men? It wasn't, Paul didn't die for you. Jesus did. And that's, I mean, that's why people ask us what we are. I said, well, we interdenominational, not non-denominational, because I'm not non-anything, right. except for non-world. <laughs> I'm inter, my arms are open. I was like, come on. God wants to work a miracle for you. I'm not going to talk to you in a way, a, a tone of strife or a tone of debate because the word of God's not to be talked about that way. It's supposed to be wept over and embraced the miracle that it is. Are you listening to me? It's not about arguing material. It's knowing God. It's about knowing him. It's about you getting a miracle, you getting to see him. One glimpse of him will change your life. Change you. New heart, new spirit, new insides, new way of thinking. And he'll put his spirit on the inside of you. What messes this up? Colossians 2.8 helps us to understand. Colossians 2.8, the scripture says this. It says, beware. A warning. Beware, lest you get ruined. Say, I don't want to be ruined. I'm going to tell you what will ruin you. The moment that you begin to see yourself outside of Jesus Christ. You start believing things that see, causes you to perceive yourself outside of this new creation. Christ Jesus. My only reason and right to interact with God, who is holy forever, is Jesus. He's all my righteousness. He's my, all my holiness. He's my righteousness, my redemption, my holiness. Are you listening to me? Yes. I'm not going to be outside of him. No. And this is what Paul warns. He says, people are going to try to ruin you. They're going to pre preach, in other words, they're going to preach another Jesus to you. Another salvation to you. Another result, another product than what, he, what Christ Jesus declared. What Paul declared. I only want the product that... You know, Jesus, look, I'll just give you an example, okay? The product that Jesus declared. He looks at a woman at the well in Samaria. Wrong nation, wrong nationality, wrong race. Start off with, she's on the outs. He says to this woman, he said, if you would recognize the gift of God and if you would recognize who I am, I would give to you to drink. And out of your belly, out of your innermost being, would spring up a wellspring of the very life of God, eternal life. She goes, stop. How is it that you being a Jew has anything to do with me, a Samaritan? For there are no dealings between us. And now Jesus begins to get, imper gets real personal with her. She starts talking about her husband. She says, I have no husband. Immediately he says to the woman, he says, yep, that's correct. You said it's true. For you've had five husbands. Look, even today, if you've had five husbands, you messed up. You messed up. There's something bad wrong with you. Don't try again. And she was there at the don't try again. And the one that you're with right now is not your husband. Look at who Jesus comes to, man. This is an amazing thing. And look at the, the offer that he has for her. An instantaneous, miraculous change that changes everything. It's not a process of, my, you need a whole lot of inner healing. Yeah. You need, like, all the counselors I can round up. You know, I'm going tell you right now, that's not going to do anything for man. It must be a miracle change of heart. This is God's salvation. It's the way he describes it. Men describe it very, very differently. Look at what happened to her. There's a wellspring. He says you will never thirst again. 
You'll never thirst for the world again. That which you look for fulfillment and completion in and to be satisfied by, it will not have any more value to you from this moment that you drink of this water of salvation that I will give to you. I want that message of Jesus. I want that kind of salvation. I want that kind of work of grace. I don't want the ones that men are talking about out here that have been filtered through their knowledge and understanding and experience. That's not a miracle. That's the works of men that never work out. Jesus does the miracles. I'll take his miracles. It changes my heart, my appetite, my attitude, my desires, my emotions, my passions. That empowers me to know God, to want to know Him. That is able, empowers me to behold how beautiful His ways are. And says, I want to be like that. I want that kind of life. Paul says this in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. He says... Beware lest anyone be ruined through philosophy. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Christian philosophical arena is bigger than the biblical one. In Hebrew, in, in, the Jude, in Jewish culture, there is something called the Mishnah, the Talmud, and the Gemara. It is a philosophical interpretation about who God is has nothing to do with the Word of God. The Torah and the Nabiim, the prophets and the law, that's the Word of God. And then there's the Talmud, that's just the oral tradition. And it just totally ruins every knowledge of God. And that's why Jesus said, he said to them, he said, you've made void the commandments of God by keeping your traditions, by your philosophy, by your ideology. What changes? We, compl- we constantly repeat the history. And, and that's why Paul warns us in Hebrews 3, 3, chapter 3 and chapter 4. It says, learn from their history because if you don't, you're going to fall after the same manner of unbelief. It's going to happen to you. It's going to be reproduced in your life. And this is what we warn men about. We want to present Jesus, the kind of life he described, the kind of life Paul described. My, when you're born of the Spirit, what should be the product? What should be the result? I can be louder than that. I'll be louder still. I'll outdo any burghini that they come by with. <laughs> because I know what God, the Holy Spirit, is doing. He's got us here on this lot because he's going to start drawing people into himself. And we're just so thankful for this lot made available to us and what God will do here and then just watch it grow to where that the lot can't hold the capacity anymore and just got to move over to the fairgrounds but till then until then we'll go on preaching (laughs) he said watch out men will ruin you they'll spoil you ruin you through philosophy Christian philosophy by and large what Paul is dealing with in in Corinthians chapter 2 is Christian philosophers he says they're great orators boy they come to you with the words of men's wisdom he said, well, you can have that or you can have the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power. Which do you choose? A, men's wisdom, great orators telling you it's okay for you to be a, as you are. Or the power demonstration of the Holy Ghost that makes you as he is. B, I'm going with B, amen. I'm going with B. Because as he is, so are we in this world. That's what we are. That's who we are. Huh? I've, ha- I've, I've, I've partaken of his body. Ha, huh, I've partaken of his blood. His life is in me. Hallelujah. This is a great thing, the greatest thing of all. Because now it's more than a wellspring, it's rivers. I just want to encourage you guys that hand, trying to handle the kids. This is going to become the nursery tent. We're going to set the, the other tent right there where the cones are. Make more room. Just watch people, watch, watch miracles start happening. All I'm doing right now is I'm talking about who Jesus is and I want to remove everything else out of the way that would make him to be different than who he is. Let's just remove all that out of the way. Let's remove all the excuses and say, Lord, I don't care what it is that you want to do in my life. What has to be done? What needs to change? Do whatever because I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. I'm all in for you. I'm here for you to let the. I'm here for you to shine the floodlight of heaven upon my soul, and whatever needs to be changed, whatever needs to be adjusted, what even ever needs to be corrected, 
Whatever it takes to move me into a greater expression of who you are. What, what an opportunity. What an amazing opportunity. A friend of mine was telling me about when he was invited to Prince of Saudi Arabia's birthday party and what it was like. He woke up in the morning, you know, he went there, all opulence and the greetings and all the stuff, but he woke up in the morning, there's a, the most expensive Rolex watch, watch that you can buy there. It was just one of the gifts. And all this opulence and all of these things and all this prestige. And I'm like, that sounds gross to me. Oh, you, there's your brand new, there's your brand new Rover outside. We're just giving that's another gift. But then all the other stuff that goes on, I'm not, unmentionables, I don't even want to go into it. Listen, we wake up in the morning with Christ Jesus and he fills us with all the riches of heaven. He supplies all that we have need of according to his riches in Christ Jesus. According to the glory of his riches in Christ Jesus. Huh? Uh, there's nothing that can compare. Whatever people could try to put on you materially, there's, what is that? Perishes with the using. But what the riches of what God wants to do in your life right now. Listen, I'm not talking to you. This is not rainbow salvation. <laughs> Remember when you were a little kid, they said you just catch up with the rainbow and there's going to be a pot of gold. Hey, I ran after those rainbows. I was a believer. Are you with me? <laughs> and then one day, you know, I saw a rainbow being cast off. Of, I think someone was, you know, sprinkling the flowers. I saw a rainbow and I discovered how to make my own rainbow. <laughs> With a hose. And then, and then I, could, I just took a rock and I threw right over where the rainbow ended. And I started digging. It was all a lie. <laughs> I finally knew how to catch up with the rainbow. I dug and there was nothing there. This is not rainbow Christianity. It's not, it isn't there's always there's something that's going to happen tomorrow if you catch up with it. And, you know, there's going to be this amazing event. It's now. This is a now salvation. This is now you can have these things now. The riches of his glory is now. Because the Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Spirit is here. And I, I want to I repeat this. I want to say this again. Everything that Jesus did in, this, in his ministry in this life was by the Holy Spirit. And everything that he's doing right now in heaven is still by the Holy Spirit. If you do not know how to connect with the Holy Spirit, you're not going to connect with what he's doing. But God's made it so easy to connect with the Holy Spirit. He comes like rivers. He comes like a flood. You're just standing there and all of a sudden, a wall of water's coming at you. Huh? It's floods in the desert. It looked like a dry, you know, riverbed. But now there's a wall of water coming at you. And you're going to get swept away in it. In the name of Jesus, I pray that every one of you gets swept away. Amen. In this flash flood that's coming at you right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul said, Beware lest you're ruined by philosophies, Christian philosophies, by vain ideas, deceits, deceptive ideas. Boy, there are a lot of examples of those. After the traditions of men. After the rudiments or after the, the ways and the activities of this world. And not after Christ Jesus. And you can see where in religion, within Christian religion, so many things that look rational and reasonable to men have infiltrated. And we've changed all of these wonderful things that God has described he would do for us through Jesus Christ into other concepts. I'll give you an example. <laughs> Somebody said, oh, well, the greater works that Jesus Christ is going to do right now, he's doing through TBN. Are you kidding me? Through the media, through, you know, all of these abilities, you know, with television and you can't really say radio anymore. I mean, I guess you can. That's not what he did. It's not what Jesus did. It's not how he did it. 
That's not what he sent us to do. Because as soon as the blind baby starts seeing more than one, as soon as those who are eaten up with cancer and have only just a few days to live are healed. And that's what Jesus does when he comes to town. He goes to the poor and to the needy, the sick and the diseased, the hurting and the afflicted. And he drives all of that away and brings the goodness of heaven into their life. Then they get to do, choose what they're going to do with it. He brought the goodness of heaven into my life when I was born of the Spirit. And I've chosen what I'm going to do with it. I want more. He brought heaven into my life. He brought heaven where there was hell. He brought heaven into my life. And I'll take more heaven. No more hell. I want all of you to just stand with me, would you? Say, no more hell. No more heaven. Only heaven. It says, don't let anyone ruin you through philosophy, vain deceits, the traditions of men that are after the course of this world, the way the world thinks about things. Well, this is how you got to do it. God helps them that help themselves. No. All the rudiments of the world. All the way the world processes the way it's got to work. Was stupid, you're sick. Don't you know you need to go to the doctor? Was stupid, don't you realize COVID's around? Where's your mask and social distancing? And we all know that if somebody, if you're with somebody that's infectious with COVID, they're going to help you. How are they going to help you? I mean, that's an infectious rate. I mean, it really is. It's very, very infectious. So the infectious factor, I think the R factor on it is six. I think it's six. It's very infectious. But I'm telling you right now, people ask me about it. I say, oh, I'm immune. <laughs> I can't get it, nor can I transmit it. <laughs> well, how can that be? You already had it. No, I had Jesus. Whoa, that's crazy. That's crazy talk. Oh, it is crazy talk. Well, can you tell me a little bit more? Give me a little more understanding about your crazy talk. <laughs> the problem is, is people have actually seen the demonstration of viruses. Are you with me? Yeah. Very familiar with the demonstration of sickness and disease. They haven't really seen the demonstration of Jesus. They're not very familiar with the demonstration of the one who delivers from sickness and disease. So let's just change that. Amen. I just want you to understand something. This is what I want you to understand. There's things out there that will ruin you. They ruin you from walking as Christ Jesus. And that's the last part of the verse. They ruin you. After the things of the world. And, and they're not ministering to you, Christ Jesus. They're not ministering to you, the one, verse 9. For we, for in him dwells, for in him dwells all the fullness of God bodily. Listen to this. And you're complete, finished, filled up, done. Of all of his fullness have we received, grace for grace. And you're complete in him who is ahead of all principality and power, in whom also you were circumcised with the circumcision of Christ in the removal of the body of the sins of the flesh. New heart. That's verse 11, new heart. You're circumcised in a circumcision made without hands and a putting off the body of the sins of the flesh, which is the circumcision of Christ Jesus. Buried with him by baptism into his death, wherein also we are risen with him through the faith of the operation or activity of God who raised up Jesus from the dead.
will you just let him touch you now? Look, he wants to have a personal relationship with you. He wants, listen, the expressions of the past should not be the expressions of tomorrow. Your concepts and ideas of how God moves through you, look, Father wants to take it so much deeper. The way that he wants to reveal his life through you, the concepts that you have of that, don't limit them. Imitate them. Don't limit what God would do through you because he's not limited. He put a limit upon no one. Of his fullness have all we received. The privilege to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge and through that be filled with all the fullness of God. There's no limits there. We all start same place, babyhood. But it's not like, oh, you guys can only grow so much and that's your, because you're the lay people. And you're the standing people. And you're the sitting people. <laughs> sitting, laying, and standing. No, it's everybody. It's just a leveling field. It's a leveling floor. There's no limitation. How much do you want? Well, you can't get stuck or blockaded or ruined. Stuck within the framework of the things that you've known about God up to this point. Huh? Ruined by the philosophies of men. Blockaded by unbelief. The cure of it is so simple. A personal relationship with Jesus Christ. One defined to us by the Word of God. Brought to us by the Holy Ghost. And all you and I have to do is say yes. The greatest thing that's going on in your life, people, is this. Are you going to obey God or are you going to disobey Him? You obey God, you just move right on in to some amazing things of revelation and insight. Disobedience, never going to work out for you. It didn't work out for Adam and Eve. It didn't work out for anybody who ever did it. They're going to work out for you. Just decide. God has given you the spirit of obedience. Amen. Say, God has given me the spirit of obedience. God has given me the spirit of obedience. He's empowered me. He's empowered me. To, obey. to obey. His ways. His ways. Of, life. of life. No more fellowship with death. No more, fellowship with death. No more hanging out with the corpses. No more hanging out in the graveyard, no more in the graveyard. of sin, of sin. And, iniquity. and iniquity. In Jesus' name. Let me ask you to do this. Just lift your hands towards heaven and let the Lord touch you right now. I know sometimes some people think it's kind of awkward. It's not really awkward. The first time we see anybody in the Bible lift their hands, it was Moses. And literally in Numbers chapter 16 says he touched the throne of Yah. He touched the throne of Yah. When I lift up my hands, I'm like reaching. I'm touching the throne. I'm touching heaven. Somebody said, I'll just reach up your hands like you're a prisoner of war and you're going in surrender. No. No. I'm touching heaven. I'm touching the throne of Yah. I want to touch him. I want to know him. I want to walk with him. And I want to demonstrate him. That's what the demonstration of the Holy Ghost is. is to demonstrate the life of Jesus. The power of Jesus. The ministry of Jesus. And Lord we thank you right now. Let heaven sweep over this place. <laughs> Let your fire Father God fall upon this place. The fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit take over every person's life in this place. Every willing heart, we ask you, Lord, invade their lives right now with your love, with your grace, with your mercy, with a demonstration of your goodness and of your power. Their lives can never be the same, Father. Never the same in Jesus' name. Never the same in Jesus' name. Never the same in Jesus' name. Now I'm going to invite you to come if you need a miracle in your life. God is here to work a miracle for you. If you've never been born of the Spirit today, it's time for you to get born of the Spirit. How's that going to happen? You're going to call on the name of Jesus. I'm going to call on the name of Jesus with you and change is going to take place. Because there's no power greater than His name. I'm getting ready to hang up a sign on the side of your tent so people can see it. It simply says, there's no power greater than the name of Jesus.
We have another sign that says, come church. Real simple. And I want you to be a part of that. I want you to, I want you to get radically touched by Jesus so that he can radically touch people's lives through you. I want you to be radically touched by Jesus so he can radically touch people's lives through you. In Jesus' name. Anybody need a miracle? Anybody need a change? Anybody needs help? He's, the helper is here. The Holy Ghost is defined as the helper. If you need help, you need change, you need a miracle in your life, you come, Jesus will touch you. He's here. You have addictions going on in your life. You've got things going on in your life you know that are not right. You don't know how to deal with them. The Lord will help you right here. He'll help you, show you how to deal with them. Got any sickness or disease in your life? Christ Jesus, he's the healer. He's never changed being the healer. How can people say that somehow Jesus isn't the healer anymore? How can people say that somehow that Jesus is like a prisoner in heaven? He's like cut off from us. No, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 18. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's here for you right now. Don't have another Jesus. Don't let people tell you about a different Jesus than the one that Jesus presented himself to be in the four gospels, that Paul presented Jesus Christ to be in his ministry. After that, he died. After that, he rose from the dead. After that, he ascended up on high. That ministry only exploded. The Jesus ministry only got bigger, not smaller. It's proven. Nothing has changed that. Don't let people tell you about another Jesus. Let's go with the same Jesus. Let's go with Jesus, the Jesus that Paul represented, that Peter represented, that Christ Jesus himself displayed. Anybody in this place, you're having problems with that, the Lord will touch you right now. He'll touch you. He'll fill you with a hunger for his word. Now, everybody that's standing here right now, listen, you just present your need before the Lord, and right now, you receive. God will touch you right where you stand. Right this moment, whatever has been going on, that problem is going to be over. We'll find out. We'll discover any other problems you have later on. But this one right now, or this issue right now, solved. You don't have to come back up again for the same issue. Next, next Sunday, we're going to have, we got people to be baptized. They're not here tonight, but we have other people going to be baptized. There'll be probably more by then. We're going right over there to the ocean. Far better than a river. And, uh, I was, I was scouting out, my goodness, where do we go? It's jam-packed. It's October, 75 degrees. And the beaches, I mean, it's like COVID-19 beaches. <laughs> People didn't go home. They didn't go back to where they're from. The extended vacation, waiting for the next check. Lord help us. He is. But it's, look, we're, gonna, we're just going to flow with the opportunity and the plan right now in Jesus' You, put, you name it. Whatever it is, you name it. Physical, you name it to the Lord right now. Spiritual, you name it to the Lord. Whatever it is. It's direction. What is it? What's going on? What's up? What's you? What's up with you guys? Oh, easy's not letting me pass him. It's like, it's like throwing the full block on me right here. What's up? Good, that's good. Well, he said when you hunger for him, you're not going to go away empty. When you thirst for him, he gave you to drink. So drink right now. Drink. Drink right now. Drink. With joy, you draw water from the well, said Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 12. He was a mighty prophet of God, so I know he knew what he was talking about. So drink. 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 In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you that you grant every one of Manny's prayers and every one of his petitions. In Jesus. Jesus. What do you need? What do you want? I want a greater compassion. Okay. 
That's good. Compassion is a good thing. It's how Jesus' ministry operates. Compassion for people. You know where that comes from? His name is the Holy Spirit. That's the only name that we have of him. He brings the love of Christ, the compassion of Jesus. So just receive right now from him and just rely on him to do it. Amen. We don't look into ourselves. We say, Holy Spirit, fill me with compassion for the lost. What is it? Name it. What is it? Istoro moketan de licor sota. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, every area where demon spirits have been allowed to run over top of you and lead you into things that are unholy, from this day forward, you begin to walk in the wisdom of the Spirit. God will never take your will away. He'll never take your your right to choose away. And it's not so much resisting the problem or the sin. It's rather allowing Him to come fill you. Because you get filled up with Him, there won't be room for nothing else. When you're enjoying His presence, my goodness, and you're learning His ways, suddenly a contrast is presented for you. That's a great deterrent. So now in the name of Jesus Christ, Spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, spirit of strength, spirit of counsel, spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Oh, the fear of the Lord. Oh, the fear of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Fill him up, Lord. Fill him up, Lord. Fill him, Holy Spirit. Fill him, Holy Spirit. Fill him, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Just renounce those things. You renounce them before God. And you looked to and rely upon the help and the power and empowerment that only the Holy Spirit can bring to you. Now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, now in Jesus' name. What's up? Lord, touch him. Heal him up. Let every one of his desires be the ones that you have. Lord, let every one of his goals and ambitions be those things, Lord, that you place in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Jesus. Name it. Whatever. Name it. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that you placed upon your daughter. I thank you, Father, for the special giftings of the Spirit of the Lord that is given to us so we can properly represent you. And Lord, we thank you that there will be a greater passion, Lord, a greater intensity of laying hold on these things. And upon little baby sister, that all she'll ever know is the goodness of God. In Jesus' name, right now. Right now. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Watch what God will do. Ha! Ha! La provote. Hit you with his he hit you with his fire. And you'll start running in passion for sure. Once you get your tail set on fire, you're gonna run. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even the passion will be there. Touched by the fire of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Baptize. Baptize. 
baptized fresh in the Holy Ghost. Filled up. Filled up. Mandoro Stangle. You just name it. Whatever you whatever you want Papa to do, you name it. Name it. Just name it. I mean the scripture says you have not because you ask not. Because you gotta name it. Name it. Name it. Name it. What is it? I want a deeper relationship with Jesus. That's what he wants. So that's good. Or let it be deeper. Happens. Happens simply by yieldedness to the Holy Spirit. It's not mystical. It's personal. Name it. No, he doesn't want you to. I can tell you that right now. No, he doesn't want that. Is that all you wanted to know? Is that all you needed? No, did, no did, was that all you wanted? The answer is no. That's not the way it works. No, uh, then you have something else you want. Okay, here's what you want. You want to trust the Lord, let Him work a miracle for you, because no one's going to take His son. Thank you, Him. The Lord will work a miracle for you right now in Jesus' name. But you can't let situations and circumstances manipulate you either. Okay? It's not the way it works. <laughs> Put your trust in God. He'll work a miracle for you. Then the situation and circumstance won't manipulate you. Lord, touch her right now in Jesus' name. Genela, Spirit of Santo, ahora mismo. Ahora mismo, en nombre de Jesucristo. Genela, field. Chinela, field. Chinela, con Spirito Santo, with the Holy Spirit. In nombre de Jesucristo, in the name of Jesus. Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Jesus. Every sister. Thank you. There's some uh, health issues and a lot of issues with this belief that we talked about. Okay. And what's the health issues? Uh, Lyme disease and a lot of Oh, you do? Lyme disease goes, look at me. Lyme disease goes from you. In Jesus' name. You go to the doctor and say, well, well, I don't know what happened, but we can't detect it. Just recently had something like that happen in Oregon. Lyme disease. And the Lord's no respecter of person, so they do the same thing for you. Stinking autoimmune, autoimmune disease. It's a fearful thing. It torments you with fear. Brow beats you to no end. You can't ever get it right. You're just struggling too hard to make things happen. It just doesn't work that way. It's going to stop in Jesus' name. Property of the living God, I proclaim in Jesus' name. That's who you are. What's your name? Sean. Sean, you the property of Jesus Christ. You belong to the living God. All these tormenting, harassing things that tries to impose upon you some other identity than what God's described in his word. Those voices come to an end. Listen, it's like this. Listen to me. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, the voice of another they will not hear. Understand this. Many voices are coming out of sheep. It's just they refuse to hear any other voice. You with me? So people hear that go, oh, my sheep hear my voice, the voice of another I will not, they will not hear. Oh, I must not be a sheep come here hearing all these voices. No, that's not what was said. No. We refuse to hear any other voice but his. So in Jesus' name, Gibronstein, die Bikadatos, Papati. Every tormenting, harassing thing that comes upon Sean's life, it comes to an end this day in Jesus' name. I break off the power of it. It ceases to exist. Everything changes. Everything changes in Jesus' name. Everything changes Father, take Sean, baptize him in the Holy Ghost and fire. Baptize him right now in the beauty of your spirit and the beauty of your holiness right now. Oh, maybe so overwhelmed by you, oh God, that nothing else can find any room to get in. 
Look, and it really truly is, it's the secret. When you're filled up by him, filled up with him, which the Lord gives us the privilege to be continually filled with the Spirit, speaking to ourselves in Psalms and in spiritual songs. When you're baptized in, God is a consuming fire. When his fire falls on you, there's nothing left but him. Just that simple. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this miracle in Sean's life. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the sharing. What? Name it. We're here for self-control. Self-control. I'm here for my fingers. Self-control and fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Lord Jesus, work a miracle right here for Joseph now. Looky over here. Jesus. Lord, I ask you, touch Hezekiah's life with your peace. It's just a peace issue. That's all it is. Just a peace issue. Peace in Jesus' name. Peace to this little spirit. Peace to this life. I give you this peace now. I give you this peace right now. What is it? Name it. Name it. I want to be. I want to be. Uh, I want to stand before kings and rulers. Uh huh. I want to stand before kings and rulers, and I also recognize I need a lot of change and maturing to do first. You don't need to do all that. Honestly, you don't need to do it. Let me just help you. You don't need all of that. It's all in Him. You're complete in Him. You're complete in Him. Having Him, you have everything. You don't need any additions. Name it. Directions. direction seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness that's the direction above all other things that's it it's all about your service in the kingdom to the king that's it that's it that's it just that simple and it can't be any different you can't change the word of God you can't change the word of God there's no way of changing it would you please change the word of God for me no Name it. Name it. What is it? Name it. Name it. I want my heart to break for what makes prophets. Huh? I want my heart to break for what makes prophets. Okay. Well. Father, we thank you that Kyla's given her life completely over to you to serve you, to walk with you. Now show her, Lord, how to be that much more yielded to you, Holy Spirit. Just, that's it. No preconceived ideas. The only, the only preconceived idea that you can have is that God is amazing. He's wonderful. He fills everything and he wants to fill you. And everything that he brings is amazingly beautiful and wonderful. Look, your request, when you make a request to God, he answers it. You don't have to wonder, once again, it's not rainbow Christianity. It's, it's here, it's now. Lord Jesus, forgive me, we forgot to pray for Lucy over here. She's crying out. Lord Jesus, touch her right now. Touch her right now, Lord Jesus. You put your love on her. You let your glory overwhelm her. In Jesus' name. There we go. Name it. That's, that's pretty easy. That's pretty easy. Just give us Okay, we're going to just give yourself over to fasting. <laughs> waiting on you. Letting the Holy Ghost pray through you. Because he's earnest to do that. He commanded you to do it. He said, pray with all prayer and supplication in the Holy Ghost, watching thereunto. It's his will. It's, will. it's his will to build yourself up in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost his will so now in Jesus name this wonderful thing 
that only the Holy Ghost can do. Begins to burn within you. Begins to burn on the inside of you. San Diego, name it. What is it? What you want the Lord to do? What's up? Would Jesus touch him right now? With more than he can think or ask. <laughs> touch him right now, Jesus. Is things going good? They're going good? Is there anything that could happen to make it better? Jesus, make it better. He's always in making things better. Even when they're really, really super good, he still makes them better. Name it. Whatever you want. Whatever you ask. He said, I'll do it. He said, whatever you ask. So whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will do it. Huh? And he's going to do it through Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost. That's it for you right now. That's it for you. Now you be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. This is, somebody says, I'm going through something. You know, it's called growing pains. It's called growing pains. You understand that? My kids sometimes used to come to me, oh, my leg hurts. I'd say, listen, that's growing pains. You're, outgrow you're growing so quickly, your body's stretching itself out. Rejoice. Be glad. You, you know more than you did before. <laughs> you understand more perfectly how to walk with the Holy Spirit than you did before. That's cause for rejoicing. Name it. Name it. Name it. What's up? Name it. Huh? Lord Jesus. Thank you for causing this relationship with you to go deeper than it's ever gone before. Thank you, Lord. Name it, and it's yours. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you for causing your daughter to think different. That nothing can corrupt this wonderful, pure mind that you've given about who you are and what you've done. I command in the name of Jesus for you to prosper and be in health even as your spirit prospers, your soul prospers. No doctor holds the answer to what you have need of. They can't even diagnose it. You're beyond medical science. <laughs> huh? So don't run to somebody who thinks they know what you're talking about. Make it up as they go. Eye of Newt, <laughs> hair of toad. In the name of Jesus, this little extract, grape, extra, grape extract, like grape extract is bigger than the name of Jesus. Huh? No, don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. You be healed now in Jesus' name. I command it so in Jesus' name. No more in and out, up and down, wavering, tossed to and fro. You know, a ship trimmed up in the wind, a schooner trimmed up in the wind is a beautiful sight. As it just reaches 40, 50 knots, just flying. However, a flapping sail with no keel that's tossed to and fro, spinning around in circles, bobbing up and down, is horrific looking. You trim that sail now in the name of Jesus. It's all right there on the table. It's like looking at the table. There's all this stuff. Just reach out and have some more. It's right there on the table. It's already set out for you. 
Thank you, Jesus. Make it so simple to your daughter how easy it is. It's not trying to work it out, work it, work through it. It's being captivated by Jesus and delighting in Him. It's just how it is. It's not working it out. Oh, no, I've got to figure this out. i got some kind of a problem, some kind of an issue. How am I going to deal with it? Don't do that. Just look at the answer. Look at the answer. Right now. Sure. Name it. Name it. Touch your servant, Jason, Lord, like only you can touch him. Fix it like only you can fix it. I'm going to tell you what happens. Our lives can get so, God's given us the opportunity that our lives can be so caught away in him that nothing really even matters anymore. It's not important anymore. As soon as things are not important, really to you anymore within the framework of how you feel about yourself and how everybody else feels about you. Most of all that stuff goes away. Failures and successes are really pretty much meaningless when you're staring at Jesus. <laughs> it's just true. It's just true. Look, just be accepted in the beloved. There, when you're just accepted by him, condemnation can't work anymore. Name it. I just don't want to know. I just want to walk with him. Don't want to hear his voice. Increases. 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 If the song of that nation. Increases. 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 Father, I thank you that you not only protect us and that you keep us, you uphold us any falling or stumbling. Oh, Lord, but you perfect everything that concerns us. Feel us to the full. You know, sometimes obedience can be almost painful, you know? It, it's very, very challenging. Sometimes it's like everything can be crying out for something different, as it were, voices. But the simple act of obedience produces growth and maturity. It's just it's so simple. You know, if you want growth and maturity in Christ Jesus without obedience, it's just never going to happen. Sometimes obedience is easy, but sometimes obedience is difficult. It's hard. It's challenging. Just stand fast. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. Choose everything that he's chosen for us. Hallelujah. <laughs> Doesn't matter how, you know, good the enemy of our soul would paint a picture for us for something different, for something else. Huh? No. We say no. We say no. I'm going to go on with God. He's got something far better than this painting or this idea or this thought. Obedience. How hard is it to grow and mature in the things of the Spirit? It's as hard as obedience is. How... how Difficult? No more difficult than obedience. <laughs> Obeying God. Doing what's right. Thank you, Father, for taking Julie and Jeremy and using them. Blessing them all the days of their life. For their walk with you, God, and the beauty of holiness. They inherit all the wonderful blessings of God that you have for us in this life and also in the life to come. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. This the Roboco. Be rich, be pregnant. Eat all of them. Father, thank you for this blessing in your family. Thank you, my God. Name it. Name it. Huh? Father, we thank you that you strengthen your daughter, Brittany, to say no to every unbelief, every confusing voice, everything that says to her something different than what you've said. In Jesus' name. Grant all of her petitions, I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, all of her prayers. I ask you to do it, Father. Bless her. Cause her to know how much you love her. Cause her to know, Lord, how that you freely gave all these things to her. They're hers. They belong to her. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let the Lord work a miracle for you. He, he'll do it. Just let him. It's good to be healed, isn't it? Touch right now, Jesus. Touch right now. Touch. Touch. Fire God. Church. We thank you that you supply all that we have need of. That you fill us up with all the good things of heaven. You be filled. You be filled up with what he's supplied. He's not holding anything get back. The Lord holds no good thing back from those who walk with him. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. I, t I couldn't disagree more with their politics. I could not disagree more with the I their ideologies, with the way that they perceive life. But I'm asking now, I'm asking Father to touch their lives. Joe Biden is at the end of his life, and he needs to come to Jesus Christ before it's eternally too late. Kamala Harris, she's probably, you know, somewhere midlife. But she needs to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. And right now, there is so much cursing going on by the church against Joe Biden and Kamala Harris over their politics. Are you kidding me? The lost are lost. They do lost things. They don't got it right on any level. Are you kidding me? We're going to condemn them because they're wrong? No, they were born wrong. We want to intercede, pray for them that they would be right. Yes. So I ask you, Father, heal Joe Biden's mind. Amen. Touch his body. Yes. Touch his spirit right now. Yes. So that he'll move out of religion and, and have an encounter with you. I ask you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, these mind-blinding spirits, the spirit of witchcraft that is on Kamala Harris, I break the power of that evil thing now in Jesus' name. I break the power of those gods of India, the Hinduist, Hinduism and its influence. I break its power in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you, in your mercy, work a miracle. Work a miracle. Let a divine encounter come to their life. Father, we pray right now for Amy this week as she goes through the grilling. Father, I ask you now in Jesus' name, work a miracle. Do those things which only you can do. Strengthen her. Lord, she's no stranger to persecution. She's no stranger to ad adversarial circumstance. 
Lord, we pray for a special strengthening of this godly woman. Father, this woman that is born of you, this your daughter, Amy Barrett, Lord, put her in the highest seat of judgment in the land. May she sit in your stead, oh God, in judgment, we pray. May no power of hell prevent it. We thank you, Father, that we have the privilege of praying for these that are in authority. Lord, we ask you right now for Governor Newsom, his heart would be changed. That they come to recognize the authority of the church, the essential nature of the church. That, Lord, we won't be a problematic issue in, within government or within the state of California or the United States, but we'll be a supply and answer, a place of safety, a place of shelter, a place of sanctuary, a place of healing. Jesus. Jesus. Well, guys, I never want to quit. I could just go all night. But we're going to commend you over to the keeping of the Lord Jesus Christ so that you'll go ahead and walk with him in a greater way this week than you ever have before. In the name of Jesus. You walk in the communion of the Holy Ghost like never before. You'll have a greater passion to know Him like never before. So I encourage you, just hug everybody in the place. Tell them that you love them. Just, just bless people. Bless them. Worship the Lord with your tithes, with your offerings, with your giving. Because the Lord, listen, I want you to understand something. The smallest acts of obedience result in the greatest acts miracles of faith can i prove it to you small act of obedience you call upon the name of the lord jesus greatest miracle of faith you're saved you're born of the spirit you're born of god and so it is in all other things just obey god he's promised to bless you to increase you more and more to come to cause your righteousness to increase and to abound Amen. through thanksgiving that's what he says it's what he's going to do just obey him. He's going to put... You, you worship the Lord with that which he's given you right now. He's going to put more in your hands so you can worship him more. Because what does he do? He supplies both the seed to the sower. He supplies you the seed to sow. And then he multiplies it. Amen. What a deal. <laughs> so we love all of you. Bless you in Jesus' name. Joseph, pleasure to meet you, man. Praise God. Awesome. Yeah. Now you were you were raised in this neighborhood, eh? I was born, yeah, raised in Del Mar. Yeah. Del Mar Heights and Torrey Pines and UCSD. Oh, okay. Actually, uh, Amy Barrett was my law school teacher. Is that right? My constitutional law teacher. My. So, uh, at, at Notre Dame. At Notre Dame. Oh. So she grilled me pretty good. I think she can oh. take a grill in your side. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, I'm excited to see how she Good does. point. Yeah. Good point. Good point. This is amazing, yeah. I mean, everything you guys have done, uh, like it um, blows my mind. Who was it that came out that I met the other day? I, we were trying to figure that out. I guess his name was George. Maybe. I call him Joe, so I just figured, you know. He's I, kind of a, a heavier Yeah, guy. he's heavier yeah, guy. Yeah. Yeah. So he's a member of our, of our parish. Okay. Uh, so uh, I walked up to him and I said, Mahaba. He said, Mahaba. Yeah, he said, like, Mahaba. He's kind of looking at me like, okay. <laughs> good. <laughs> he, he, good. Helped, he helped out with like, electricity or something. Yeah, he did. Uh, and then, you know, he, he just he walked me over across the street. He said, yeah, this is our lot over here, too. Really need to get it cleaned up. I said, I'll clean it up for you. I'll wow. run the tractor and clean it up. That would be amazing. Yeah.
Thank <laughs> you.